Welcome back. This portion of the presentation will focus on the RSA public key encryption algorithm. As we saw at the end of the previous presentation, the Diffie-Hellman algorithm has some impracticalities. As we saw, it requires a setup phase in which Alice has to exchange some public information with, with Bob, not only with that Bob, with, with any Bob she wishes to exchange a key with. These impracticalities are avoided by another algorithm that we're going to look at, the revist shamir edelman or RSA algorithm, which is the most widely used cryptographic algorithm. Here's the public key model that it uses. The cryptographic key is broken into two parts, a public and a private part. The public part is used for encrypting, so Bob's public key is used by Alice to encrypt the word hello, running it through the encrypt algorithm, and then sending the result, this gibberish here, over to Bob. He uses the private part of his key to decrypt the word, the gibberish, and retrieve the word hello. The encryption happens by using a key that's been divided into two. And as you can see, visually, these two parts are related. They really are one key that's been divided in half. We'll want to see how that happens, how that works. The key is broken into a public and private part. Bob and Alice publish their public keys. And that's the big difference between RSA and Diffie-Hellman. They publish them so that all people who want to encrypt messages to Bob can use Bob's public key, Alice and anyone else. Alice encrypts the word hello using Bob's public key, sends the encrypted gibberish to Bob, who decrypts it with his private key. So let's see, what makes RSA hard? What protects RSA from Eve? It's also based on a one-way function, and it's our familiar modular arithmetic function, which is easy in one direction and hard in the other. In this case, the M in this expression represents the secret message that's being communicated. The E is a public exponent. It's part of the public key. The N is a public modulus also part of the public key. And the C is the resulting encrypted message. And again, it's easy to compute m to the e mod n, knowing m, e, and n, but it's very difficult. It's intractable to find m, given the encrypted message, plus the public key, e and n. And again, the idea for the public and private key is that they are two halves of this exponent used in the expression m raised to an exponent mod n. And so the trick is mathematically to get this exponent in such a way that it's very hard to break it in half if you don't know some secrets. So that's a very high level summary of the RSA algorithm. Let's summarize its key features. First, like Diffie-Hellman, the RSA algorithm so uh, solves the key exchange problem. Unlike Diffie-Hellman, however, the RSA public keys can be widely published and distributed rather than needing to be shared among parties in an encryption transaction. And that makes it especially well suited for internet encryption. And finally, RSA is secured by the intractability of the prime factorization problem. That's the problem of trying to discover the prime factors of a very, very large number. So here again, we see intractability being used to protect information, just as we did when we used it to help protect passwords from brute force attacks.